What's up, everybody? It's Nerp here, and welcome to uh, a another episode of Scrolls. Today, I'm doing a challenge match with someone you may or may not know. You might know him, Duke Pool. He has a YouTube channel, but the reason uh, Scrolls uh, he uploads Scrolls on his YouTube channel is actually pretty big. He has 70,000 subscribers, but the reason. You might not know him is because he is an Italian youtuber all his videos are in Italian so he is actually recording this match also and he's going to upload it to his channel and do a post commentary on it but I mean you can watch that if you know how to speak Italian <laughs> so it is nice to see uh, other larger YouTube channels making scrolls videos like, uh, he has 70 times more subscribers than me. And I believe he's playing, uh, Mono Energy Ranged. So I just played Mono Decay. Because we didn't want to have, like, a mirror match for a video. Or, like, an unfair matchup, like, like, Structure Energy versus, uh, Decay. Yeah. Alright, so I have a pretty good hand. Whenever he plays this turn, he plays and I could just brain lice it. And then a hunter next turn. Hunter is good against anything but decay, so. I'm actually gonna see what Duke Pool is rated. Alright. It's a little annoying because he was about to stack, but luckily I drew a three drop I could play. So that's nice. Um, yeah, I'll put it on the same row. Yeah, actually, I'm not going to. Uh. Okay, so he, does, he doesn't play much ranked, but. He has played a bunch of games. Won almost 70% of his matches. Alright. So now we'll play an Illmire Hunter. Yeah, I'll just probably play an Illmire Hunter, whatever happens. Even if he plays something and then I like, draw a damage curse, I'm probably just gonna attack that damage curse. Gun Automaton. Copperados. A little annoying, but we can manage. Uh. I'm gonna move up and try to kill you. Or. Should I put the hunter in front of the Trizen? <coughs> Sorry. To protect him. Trizen's not that valuable. I mean, three counts down, two attack. Hmm. I'll give him a choice. And we'll see what choice he takes. And it might be the right choice or the wrong choice. I'll leave it up to him. I feel like the music's a little loud. Alright. Uh, that should be better. I'm gonna load the SFX also. Okay. It'd be nice if I, like, top deck the Soul Steel last turn so I can get rid of this copper. A mortar, okay. And another copper, no. Alright, uh,. Wasn't really a good draw there. Uh, well, it's kind of bad. At least he has no cards. You're dead. You're dead. A lot of things are dying. I guess I'll just do that. Not that good. He could burn me now, and then both things get poisoned, and it's annoying, but he only has one card right now. Sacking it, so. If it was a burn, he probably would have played it, and then sacked the next card, because burn draws you a scroll when creatures threw less health. <laughs> what do you get? Spark, alright. Okay. 
So at least that thing's gone. See, those copper automatons, they're annoying, but they die afterwards. Uh, guess I'll just play both of these creatures then. I am going to move you over a little bit. You can always come back and kill the mortar. But I moved you over because I don't want him burning it when I'm on the same line as these two guys. Okay. So now we just have to pray this mortar does not kill any of our guys. Especially not these two. Okay. Hopefully it doesn't burn either of these guys. If he had a burn right now, I'm not sure who he'd choose because if he burns this guy, he saves his mortar from being destroyed next turn. But if he burns that guy, this guy gets bigger. If you burn this guy, then it prevents him from getting bigger. Once this guy gains one health, he's gonna probably gonna need a bounce dispersal or something to kill it. Unless he able to get like Stormrunner Bombard or whatever. Now we cross our fingers. Ooh, that's close. Right in between them. Uh, watchers against mono energy range. Yeah, not that useful. Okay. Go like that. I'm gonna move down at least because what this is gonna do is now I oh well if he kills this guy I'm gonna get the buff from both of these so I don't really mind best case scenario he like kills the pipe bear with his guys on that line but I think he knows how to do that so it'll be interesting if he wants to make both of these out of burn range right now or if he just wants to hit an idol or kill this guy. And next turn I can probably sack whatever comes up, play a white bear, and the next turn play a witch doctor. But against mono energy range it's a little risky because the witch doctor is a very big target for like a uh, storm runner, uh, machinated bombard, and that can really be a pain. So I have to watch out for that. It also can make you feel a little too safe because then you're all clumped together and then all of a sudden there's like a thunder surge and then like the burn of the witch doctor. So I am going to have two four four rod eaters unless he burns one of them right now. I don't have one five five rod eater. BC move down. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Another cop copper. Okay, um let's see. Oh, I can actually I can kill. It's a tough choice. Do I want to uh, sacrifice the brain lights or the blight bear so I can make sure I can play the witch doctor next turn? I'm actually gonna sack the witch doctor for cards. I really want to see if I can draw soul steel because I could soul steal that, but out so then both of these things are gone, or maybe I'll soul steal this so then I can kill the storm runner. So I am going to sacrifice the Witch Doctor. And, nah, we didn't get anything we wanted, but it's okay, it's okay. Now let's see. I guess that's what we do, and then you back and move you up I'm just trying to stay away from like the because there's a very good chance now he has like a bombard mash needed which would use all his resources so that's all he would be able to do and if he did that then that would be kind of hard to deal with <sighs> I would be left with this guy on the board so you can move him back him. but Alright, he doesn't have Bombard Mash needed, that's nice. So now, I mean, now a, a single Bombard's not nearly as scary. Because that means probably both of these guys survive. Or no, the, the, the Curse Monger could die if he, if he chooses. Okay, so I have a Curse Monger in the field, so I probably should wait. I should, probably should keep the Brain Lace, unless he kills the kills the Curse Monger. So there's a very good chance he kills the Curse Monger, but if it's if it survives until its countdown reaches zero, 
very good chance I uh, curse Brain Lice at the Storm Runner, but it's not dead already. I could damning curse the Storm Runner, but is it really worth it? I mean, Storm Runner is a very good carp. It's only three drop, and do I really want to deal all deal one damage to all my stuff? Actually, I think I do want to deal one damage to all my stuff because I can get this guy to explode and poison all of his units and then these two guys get bigger yes that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna even though this even though this whole row is gonna get poisoned I'm still gonna damage curse a storm runner because I could just kill the gun on him on this turn and storm runner is a threat so yeah I think that's pretty good and I'm going to sack for cards even though I already have it okay uh, so I'll make sure you blow up next to me. Um, it's good. And he is not at six wishes yet, so I can clump up because I don't think he has a thunder surge. And too bad I couldn't wait until I had a harvester on the field for this, but I think we want to do this right now. Yay! So now we could curse, if, he, if this thing stays alive this turn, if this curse monitor, we can curse the Cannonetta. And then that will force us to die next turn because it's poisoned. Or we could simply brain lice it. Or we can brain lice and curse something else. And we also have this thing attacking. So we'll have to see what he does. What's up, like a uh, Bombard Machinated? <laughs> I think so. Okay, that destroys these two guys, I think. Ah, alright, it's a little annoying, but I think we're okay. Now, do I risk. <coughs> do I risk him have, drawing another bombard? Because then he could get this guy to go off again. Like, I could just poison him. I'm, I'm gonna hope he doesn't have another bombard. He only has one card in hand. It's a good chance he doesn't have another bombard. So, yeah. Things are dying, so I'll move up. <clears throat> Even if he has a bombard, he would need something with a bombard to kill the uh, rot eater. And I don't really mind if my oblivion secret dies. <clears throat> Alright. So, he's able to destroy one of our Rod Eaters and our Curse Monger. We're about tied in a... Uh, like, ooh, what's he doing? Maybe he's going with a Bombard and a Creature. Does he have a Bombard and a Creature? Are those, two card are those his two cards right now? We're about tied in like, the resources department. So we both have like five, to five uh, resources and like two, three cards. And I do have more board control with this big Rod Eater and his thing's about to die, but if he can get a creature and a Bombard off this turn, which it probably is doing, because I don't know why else he would use a power trip, then he's swinging the board control back to his favor. But this thing is still going to die, and I could probably still seal our brain lights to kill the other thing. Huh. Okay. So now is he going to Bombard to kill it? I mean, I'd rather him do that than uh, use a creature, because then he doesn't get the creature on the board. Okay. So I lose my big rider, I assume. Or no, I don't. Wow. Hmm. A little questionable why I used the power trip on that turn if he wasn't going to clear my board. But I'll take it. Uh, I guess I'll... I want to keep stuff... Energy doesn't have that many little things besides, I guess he, unless he has dust runners. And he did play copper automaton, so maybe I want to keep the soul steel. Lingua is also good, though. I'm going to sack the brain lice. Eh, those are canned automatons, the armor guys and the scouts. Kind of have to use them for that, so. I'll sack the languid. Maybe I should have kept the languid. The really good, but whatever. So now I have two big threats on the board. But, as we know, structures are hard for me to deal with. 
Decay has problems dealing with structures, like things like Dam and Curse are a target creature, if you didn't know. So hopefully uh, I can go Harvester Soul Steel or Harvester Brain Lice this turn. Okay. So I can I'll just go harvester harvester. Uh <clears throat> I think I'll sack the soul steel now. Yeah, I think I'll sack the soul steel. Because he already used three copper autos and I haven't seen any other low drops. I didn't see scatter but scatter gunners or anything. So I will go ahead and do that and yeah, I guess that's fine. I'll go double harvester. And I will go like this, just so I move these guys like that. You usually want your rod here in the middle, but I know it's hard for me to destroy structures, so barring a potion resistance or him killing one of these guys, I want to put the rod eater attacking in front, so like the four damage is not enough to destroy the forge, and there's no way of boosting damage like in my decay deck. So. I can put this guy in front and this guy in back in case like the gun on that spawns there's one half chance it spawns behind it unless he puts something behind it and then it would have to spawn there so yeah just explaining why I moved him up and him to the side so I'm not really afraid of what he could do now okay an elder that's a damning curse target uh or a soul steel target because we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna check the damn curse. Okay, good. So I will indeed just go like this. <coughs> I'll I'll put the I'll put the elder in soul steel range for next turn. And then I'm gonna brain lace this guy so he eventually dies. I'll just put a tribesman up in front of you in case he has like a bombard or something this turn and move you guys away I don't really love having my life sealer in the back because life sealer is like one of those cards you want in the front piece of its ability it has five health which is a, like a front card and uh, it gets healed every time it kills something so but tribesman is also a nice blocker in the front unless life sealer is valuable though because it has four attack and only two counts out I think Life Seal is a really underrated card in Decay. A lot of people like to leave it out of their decks because they're like, they think like, Ilmara Hunter is like really good with the Slayer and stuff like that. Five health for like one less cost. But this guy is hard to deal with. A lot of times you need like a Bound Dispersal to deal with him or a Damning Curse. He continues to heal up. He's very good. Maybe not quite as good as Decay's other five drops, the Oblivion Seeker. Because Oblivion Seeker has epic card draw, but against like stuff like uh like growth and order sometimes, he can really hold down the fort because he'll just continue to feed off the like little growth creatures and heal up and be a nice wall in the front. Okay. So now, I could have brain lice the Elder, but I knew I had a Soul Steel, so that's why I didn't. Okay, so now I'm going to... Okay. I guess I will... I'm going to hold on to the Watcher now, because... I sacked two Necrogen, so there is another Necrogen kind of coming. So I'm going to sack the Languid. Or I guess I could Languid you, but I want to put... No, I'm not going to Languid. I'm going to sack the Languid. Yeah. I'm just gonna play Harvester Soul Steel, and then I'll have three Harvesters like about to destroy things. Okay, uh, they all just went down to four. Um, should I? D okay, I'm going to I'm trying to figure out how I can protect this Meyer Shambler from dying. Eh, I'll let it die. It'll help. It'll buff this guy, and my three harvesters will go down. So I don't think he has enough ounce dispersals to win this match. 
So we have a watcher in our hand, so if we get a necro again, we can do stuff. We have a damning curse, which if if uh, Duke will elects not to kill my Meyer Shamble this turn, uh, but damning curse will kill it anyways, so I can definitely get my harvesters down to two countdown with a damning curse. Or more. We'll see what else I can do. Like if he has a uh, if he puts down my oh, thunder surge, oh on the harvesters. Okay, so now they're much easier to be destroyed. And now he damage curse put them at one health. But against energy, one health and two health is not a big deal. The only thing that makes a difference really like iron whip. So I'm really I'm not gonna do anything about that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play a curse monger rod eater. Uh, I'm gonna move down because wait, I'm gonna go like this, that, that. Okay, I'm trying to stay away from myself, like because I don't want a thunder surge to destroy me. Okay, so now I can get my harvesters down to one countdown with the damage curse. So if he kills anything on my side this turn, I can make the other, the other two harvesters or three harvesters, depending on how many I have left, attack with the damage curse. Because when you play damage curse, all you units on your side take one damage, and this Meyer Shambler would die and buff this guy, and maybe I move this guy so it buffs the both rod eaters. So things are looking good, and I could even damage curse with a watcher, so I get the uh, watcher. Uh, Watch her hit two damage on an idol. I could win. Can I win next turn if I do this? Yeah, I can. Yeah. It's GG if you don't kill a harvester. If he kills one harvester, it's not GG yet. It's almost GG. Actually, it is GG if I get really lucky with a watcher hit. If he kills one of the harvesters. But if he doesn't kill any harvesters, it's GG. Or he could protect his stuff with like two like mortars. Then, then I wouldn't be able to win yet. Oh, that was actually pretty good. Killed both har two harvesters. I think that was a. Uh... Oh, well, he lost. Yeah. GG. I guess even though I killed two harvesters, he had to go all three. Even then, I probably still would have won though. So, uh, yeah. Fun little challenge match with uh, Duke Pool. So you can go check out his um, his YouTube channel. It's uh, I'll link it in the description. Uh, I think it's just like Duke Pool. But keep in mind, all his videos are in Italian, so you're not gonna understand if they don't speak Italian. But yeah, he plays girls, and it's a pretty big channel, at, like 70,000 subs. So that's awesome. So thank you all for watching, and keep on scrolling, everybody. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you want more content, and I'll see you all next time.